Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our RPG Unity tutorial series. Now, last time out, we just started making maps, we covered the basics of how to do it, and in this episode, we're going to cover a few more little things to make using this uh, tiled editor that we're using to make it a little bit more uh, helpful for us and to be able to um, do a few more little things. So, last time we um, showed how to import it in here, but the problem was when we drug when we dragged the prefab into the world it came out all big massive and giant and then we had to go over to here and set the scale down nice and small to be able to um, fit into our world for us and we don't want to have to do that every single time that's just incredibly annoying so we need to there's a way we can actually set that within tiled so that when we as soon as we save the map we can drag it in and it'll be absolutely fine and it's very straightforward all we have to do uh, if we actually take a look in tile to unity um, when you first open Tile to Unity, you get this window kind of explaining a few basics of how it works. And you can like look into all this stuff yourself, but I'm just going to cover the, some helpful little things. And basically there's this stuff here, which is incredibly useful. Um, so we're going to look at sorting layer and stuff in a second. But for the moment, if we see the one here called Unity Scale, Unity Scale is really helpful because we can just tell the map to go to a certain size. So if we go back into our map editor, what we want to do is, uh, say we have these tile layers all sorted out here, what we want to do is if we go to map up here uh, and we hit map properties, what that'll do is it'll change the property box down here because if you have a tile layer selected it'll be the properties for that tile layer but what we want is the overall map properties. So we, we have this box active down here now, if we scroll into the bottom there's a space for custom properties and if we click on that and then hit the plus button here if we type in into this box unity scale and then hit OK and then in the value box here the scale we know we worked out already is uh, because our pixels are 16 by 16 instead of being 1 by 1 um, or our tiles uh, so we need to divide our 1 by 16 so we get 0 0.0625 which is one sixteenth, sorry, one sixteenth, if I could talk. Uh, so now, by default, Unity uh, or the Unity uh, tile to Unity will import uh, our thing at the right size. So um, I could show that now, but we'll lose all these values and have to reopen it. But I'll demonstrate in a second that when we bring it into uh, Unity, it'll be the actual right size for when we drag it into the game. Um, but one other little thing I wanted to talk about is the sorting order and sorting layer name. So we talked about wanting to be able to move behind the trees. So when our player, if we hit play here, we don't want to walk into the trees. Um, although we haven't set up the collision stuff yet, so the player can just walk into the tree like that. But we want them to be able to walk behind the, the tree, excuse me, uh, so that as he's walking along, he can it'll give a little bit more of an illusion of depth in the world and one way, we, one way we could do that is if we just drag our player on top of this tree here and so the way that the order of everything in the world as we already discussed before is using our sorting layers to sort which order things appear in. and we set up a player layer and if we actually go and add a new layer here and we'll call this um, just call this world objects, something simple like that. Uh, but these are things that are going to appear in front of the player. So we have the ground, which is obviously behind the player. Then we have a player layer, and then we have world objects, which will be things in front. So we could go and manually in our on our test area here and on our objects layer, which is what our uh, trees were on, because we know we did that in our maps here. Um, if we go to the mesh like this. And then go over here to the sorting layer. Instead of default, we can set that to world objects, and then our player will appear behind them like that. So that would be that's that's one way to do it, obviously. But again, if we have a whole bunch of maps that we're making in our game, and every time we import them back into our world, we have to go and assign each layer here to be a certain sorting layer. Again, that's incredibly annoying. So we don't want to do that. So I'm just going to reset this back to what it was for the moment. To demonstrate that it will work uh, once we get it all going so we'll move our player back over here 
So instead of that, if we look at tile to unity again, we have here a unity colon sorting sorting order and sorting layer name. So if we just look at here, we have our sorting layer name and what we just set up was one for world objects. And also within that layer, we can set different order. So you can do it zero, one, two, three, and higher numbers will always appear in front of lower numbers. So say if you want to have two things on the player layer, but you always want your player to appear in front or or behind. No, if you always want your player to appear in front of any objects, you can set your player to always be one in the, in the player sorting layer and any other things such as maybe enemies and um, because enemies you would obviously want to appear behind trees and all this stuff as well and um, you could set them to zero and then the player will always appear uh, on top of enemies if you happen to walk over them for some strange reason um but yeah so like i said we've got the, our unity sorting order and using unity sorting layer name so what we want to use is our sorting layer name because we just assigned one called world objects so what we need to do is on our layer that contains all the trees which is this object layer and to make sure you're testing the right layer if you uncheck and check you can see that they pop on, on and off so you make sure that you know you're actually affecting the right thing but on this objects layer as soon as you click on that the properties uh, box down here then changes to being for uh, that particular layer so again, if we scroll down here, if we go to custom properties, we can see the map property that we set is gone because that only applies to the whole map overall, not this individual layer. And uh, if we hit the plus, so we're gonna hit type in unity colon, and just to make sure we get the right name, if we just copy sorting layer name here and paste it in there like that without the space and hit okay. So now we need to use the name that we set in unity and we need to make sure we do the exact same and make sure it's capitalized the exact same so world objects call it the exact same thing here world objects like that and we could apply a sorting order but we don't need to worry about that for the moment if we had multiple object layers like this then we could do that but we don't need to worry about that for now so now i'm going to hit save on this and i'm going to open this up in tile to unity we're going to open that file again let this load up and run through uh, and then <clears throat> we'll obviously export it again and actually I'm going to go into unity here I'm going to delete this test area from the world and just to demonstrate that when we drag the new one in it'll um, be the right size so hit the big ass export button and that kind of compresses all that and works it out and then once that's done we go into unity and one of the good things about this is because we're using an object we're using the map the exact same and we're using the same map rather than just creating a new prefab every single time it simply just overwrites the one that was already there so you want to make sure that you keep on your maps having different names whatever you do don't call two maps having the same name or else you might lose one and that wouldn't be good for anybody but now on our test area we can see the scale has been automatically set to 0 0.0625 which is perfect and if we click and drag that in here we should see if we drag our player he now appears behind these trees so let's just run the game to show that working and we walk over here there we go we are magically appearing behind the trees just like that okay so in in we're not quite done with this episode yet but i just want to say in the next episode we're going to look at how to make sure that the player when he walks into those trees actually hits the collision box that we created and actually that affects the player so he can't just bounce off things in the world. But last time out we looked at on our tile map, uh, for example with this guy here, applying uh, our tile collision editor and we discussed how you had to draw over each tile to make them all uh, have the collision that we want. Um, but there's a couple of different ways of doing this that I just want to go through as well to demonstrate that that's not the only way you have to do it. There is some other ways and it's basically it's down to you to kind of see which way do you feel is the most um, appropriate for you. So one way of doing it is uh, to basically you use a, a tiny little tile set which I've already created which will just be one block of red. Um, so I'm just going to make a new tile set here. Um, I'm just going to call this uh, red collision. Uh, and I just have created a simple little file here, which is uh, just a red little collision box. 
and I'm gonna hit OK on this. And it's like it's just a, a red square. That's all I need to do is just create a little art file of a, a 16 by 16 uh, red square. And we're gonna click on that and hit uh, which is it the tile collision editor. We're gonna draw a box around this guy like that. Then we're gonna create a new layer, add a tile layer that we're gonna call the collision layer. And basically all we're going to do is wherever we want to have some collision, we're going to draw over uh, our trees. So, or our trees over wh whatever we want. So for the moment, just as a demonstration, I'm going to draw a bit of collision down here. So this whole area should have a collision box around it when it's brought into the game. So, um, although you can't see it now, like, like I said uh, previously, when we just edited the collision on the individual tiles, there's no way of seeing it within the game world here. That's obvious, but now using this collision layer method, at least you can see, okay, here's some squares where I know there's a collision box so my player won't be able to walk into. So for example, now we could go and create um, a line around the edge like this so that the player uh, can't walk out of this area of the world. Uh, I haven't drawn around this area here because we're going to do something else now in a second. Um, so that's kind of, it's one way of doing it and one way of handling it. It's, just giving you some more options uh, and finally there's a third way uh, I'm sure there's other ways too but these are the three most common ways that I've seen and the most handy way to do these things and um, we're going to create a new layer here again by clicking on this object but instead of adding a tile layer we're going to add an object layer so object layers are basically extra layers that we can use to handle extra collision so what we can do with this is much like we had when we went to view the tile collision editor we have these boxes here, which are collision boxes. So we could grab a box one like this and kind of draw that there and draw another box down here and another box here. And then we'll have some tile collision going on there. Or, which is kind of a handy little thing with this, with our trees, although at the moment we've only kind of boxed off the bottom of them, what we could do is with this line editor kind of one is go click here like this, click here like this, click here like this and click back at the start and then hit enter and that'll create a triangular shaped one which is pretty handy because then we can create a uh, triangular shaped ones around all the trees like this if we wanted to so we could leave the bottom of the trees available or if we wanted to we could make it so that uh, oops, no if, if we wanted to make only the bottom of the trees not be walkable around like that so then the player can walk into the would bounce off the bottom of the trees but he can still walk behind the rest of it which would be pretty handy too or uh, for example with the edge of this water we could make it have a slanty edge like that basically you can do whatever kind of shapes you want you know how to draw things i'm not going to um just talk about drawing those shapes but basically there you go that's some just a, two extra ways of drawing our collision so if we save this Go back to Tile to Unity again, and we're going to reload the same map again. You have to remember you can't just export it again straight away. It has to reprocess all the um, layers and stuff like that. So don't just immediately jump to Big Ass Export and wonder why it's not working. You have to make sure it reprocesses it every time. So there we go. It's finished in processing. We hit Big Ass Export again. And now if we go into Unity... Our map should automatically get updated because we're using the same map here and we can see we've got all those little red boxes that indicate where the player can't move uh, and if we just drop down this here on our that's our collision layer and we create an object layer here and we can see by the green lines that collision boxes have been created around the different objects we drew so for example we've got the triangle around the tree here um, don't seem to have the little tiny one we drew but that might just be because we drew it too small uh, but we have the boxer in the lake here like this uh, actually I think I might have undid yes I undid the, the little one I drew around the tree by accident so that's why it's not here uh, which makes more sense I wasn't really sure why it would disappear because it was small um, but we can see we've got the collision boxes drawn around everything and similarly if we click on collision layer here we can see we've got collision boxes created around everything we can see these boxes are a little more clean and um, whereas what we had 
with our object layer those individual boxes we drew they don't, where we had two of them overlapping each other it's literally just two boxes overlapping but with the tile collision like this we can see that they've kind of joined those boxes together with a little diagonal line which is kind of handy and interesting as well um but of course the problem being we're still left with these red boxes in the world which we don't want the player to be able to see so if we click the drop down of the collision layer we can see where the mesh and the collision are two two separate things all together so on our mesh we can literally just turn that off like that so now the player no longer can see where those areas are you can't walk in but the collision still exists in the world for the player to walk into so there you go that's kind of three separate ways to handle the collision for our maps uh, and also some simple ways to automatically assign different things to our layers in tile to unity so if we scroll back up here um, you can see there's some other things we can set those collision boxes to be triggers we can give them tags we can give them different layers different sorting orders and all that stuff like i said it's really handy and kind of it helps speed up the whole process rather than having to go and do this stuff over and over again just as soon as you're setting up a map or setting up a layer you just go okay type unity scale or whatever into the map um, or sorting order into the layer and it'll all be right for when you import it into unity so it's very handy and a really great tool that is the best thing about it is that it's free to use so uh, I definitely recommend using Tiled for your own kind of 2D games like this. I know I've been using it for my own stuff also. So there we go. Next time out, we're going to look at now that we've added all these collisions into the world, uh, these collision boxes and stuff, we need to make sure that our player, when he's walking around the world, instead of just walking over all this stuff, he actually bumps into things. We, we can hide behind these trees, but he can just walk straight through them. That's not very useful at all. He can walk off off and off the screen and stuff like that so we don't want the player to be able to do that so we need to fix some uh some collision magic to go on and happen and stop the player being able to do all this stuff so for now i'm going to say goodbye thanks for watching this episode and next time out we will handle some collision on our player thanks for checking out this episode and if you want even more games plus james goodness make sure you hit those subscribe and like buttons you can also find me on Twitter and Facebook by following the links on screen where you can find out all the latest news about the channel. And if you want to help support the show, check out the Patreon page where you can get exclusive content in return for helping make the channel even better. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.